Hi, my name is Mandy Burrow and I'm a lighting designer based out of New York. I'm going to do a getting started video with the D2. Um, this is going to be a kind of learning the ropes and tips and tricks type of video. Um, I got D2 about three, maybe four months ago. I haven't had too much time to play around with it when I got it. But due to my crazy jam-packed future calendar, um, I had a couple of nights to mess around with it. So I'm gonna teach you what I picked up along the way. I also replicated the Ultra Miami Music Festival uh, 2009 stage. This is not my design. Um, I just kind of rebuilt the stage and uh, I'm gonna work off this project to show you what I've learned. Okay, so before we start, something you should know about D2. D2 is not a drawing software, um, meaning it's not Vectorworks. You can't pull out proper drawings, CAD files, and, and whatnot from here. So the, the proper process way to work with D2 is to draw on Vectorworks or a software like Vectorworks, export MVR, import that MVR file into D2, and then start your programming from there. Um, that is the way I do it, at least. Um, before we start, I'll give you a little rundown of what my setup looks like. Uh, Okay, so I have four separate designated computers running this system. So MA has its own designated computer running Artnet into the D2 system. And then video is running through Resolume Arena, running into a capture card via NDI into the D2 system. And then, and then audio runs into an audio card, which then splits the audio and sends the music into the speakers. And then the timecode sent the track into the MA computer. Um, let's go ahead and start importing the file. So, I've drew up the drawing on Vectorworks, and I'm going to import that file to D2 via MVR. So, we're going to go to File, Import, Import MVR File, Ultra 19, and it's going to load the file into D2. This can take a minute, depending on how big your file is. This is the first prompt that you're going to get when loading the file. Um, this is basically telling you in your MVR file you have X amount of lights with these type of fixture names. Can you please tell me what type of lights these lights are within D2? So since I've loaded these lights in the past, the program does remember my selection. But when you do this for the first time, you're going to have this column is going to be blank. And what you're going to do is you're going to go the first light is going to be uh, BMFLs, so we're going to type in the search bar BMFL. I'm sorry, I'm typing in my MA computer BMF, BMFL. When we get all the BMFL units, we're going to go to the BMFL spot, we're going to drop that right here, and then it's going to remember that you're using the BMFL mode one. Um, you can switch the mode over here and you can also switch it later. So we're gonna select mode two and then we're gonna put that right there. Um, the atomics are there, so it remembers already my previous selection. Um, once you do this, it's gonna load your into all your content that's in the uh, file. This can take a while. Um, depending on how large your drawing is. So the next question it's going to ask me is saying that there's a collision with the patch since I haven't patched my fixtures in Vectorworks. I just brought them in Blink. So Blink is some sort of collision because they're all in the same thing. So it's asking me whether I wanted to auto patch them or I don't. I'm going to go with yes and then it's going to bring in my design. Um, I'll just give you a, a brief walk through of what we have going on here in front of house um, this is the main stage um, behind the stage we have all the uh, you know caravans tents generators fooding food area uh, trucks and a lot of extra goodies um, first thing I want to do is when importing my file is I want to dress up my file I want to dress up my my design so it looks good so my clients are happy right 
Um, so first thing I would do is I would go into, this is an outdoor scene, so I'm gonna go to object, create an environment, which is a really, really, really cool feature that D2 has. Um, and this kind of creates an atmosphere around um, the area. Um, and this atmosphere can be adjusted from this little sun icon on, on the bottom. Um, you can adjust where the sun is during the day. You can create um, sunset or sunrise. You can move the sun around to where it's going to be in your scene. Um, you can create really dark, like dawn. Um, and daylight obviously you can also set presets um, by clicking control and just tapping that button and then if I go here and I click that it's gonna go back to that and then if I created this scene then I can create control click and then I can go between my two scenes um, the Next thing that I would do is um, is create materials, uh, put put materials on different things. Um, for example, if I want to draw, if I want to, you know, paint my truss um, black, for example, so I can go into materials. You have categories in here, and in these categories, you have subcategories um, with lots and lots of really cool, um, you know, materials that you can apply to your to your um, items so this is black but I'm sorry I'm not gonna paint the whole thing but I'm gonna show you different cool things that you can do for example if you go to metal I can you know paint this gold and if you look at the Sun and the way that the light hits it you can kind of like see the re re you can kind of see the um, clouds reflecting within the gold um, give it that bronze color, copper. So there are a lot of cool different, you know, um, materials that you can use to make your scene look uh, a lot more realistic. I'm just going to keep it like this for now. Okay, so I'm going to show you now how to make a lake or pool or anything with the with water in it so what we're gonna do is we're gonna click this and you have five different options up here uh, down up kind of mounty uh, bumpy wavy straight and then straighten a, a surface on the top this is your radius of how big of a bubble or drawing area you're gonna do um, so I'm just gonna go on a really big um, angle here just so it's faster. Um, now, if I click limit and I limit the number, say 300, sorry, minus 300, this will have some sort of limit. Not some sort, it would have a limit to the value of what you decided. Um, and you're done drawing you can take a plane and pull it over down a little bit we'll go to our materials we'll go to nature water and drop and that will give us that lake look we can change the types of water whether it's dirty I think I think this one will look best for Miami um, now that's how you make the water effect. If we go back to this tool, we can make mountains by 
going up. The next tool over is going to give us that rocky mountain look. So if you need to make a lot of mountains or more of like a, you know, desert looking thing, this would kind of like help you do it faster. The next one over is going to flatten your surface back to being straight. Um, and the last one would take a mountain's top and kind of like level it out for you. Next thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to drop a crowd. So we're going to put people in. Uh, we're going to do that by going to models. I don't know why it's doing that every second. Going to models, people. We have static people, we have animated people. We're going to drop an animated person. What you guys do is drag and drop. Um, by clicking the person, the character, you can go into settings and then where it says running animation, there are a couple different choreographies and they range with numbers, so one through normally four or five. Um, and when you switch the number, you can change its choreography. So this one only has five. I want to kind of kind of pack this place with people, but I'm not going to put them in one by one. It's kind of ridiculous. So for that, we have this tool right here, which is the mass placement tool. You press this tool, and then you drag the the model you want to put in. It can be a person. It could be. A, a tree, it can be anything you want. Um, down here you have the different um, options of, of radius and distance and number of how many numbers gonna, of, you know, people it's going to drop. The size, um, can I change the size of them, like heights, so one could be taller than the other, and like different things. When you do trees, it kind of looks good. Rotation, um, so you can have them all like uh, uh, looking in different areas, so if you're doing trees, it's going to rotate the tree every like different rotations um, and numbers. So I'm just going to drop it in the way it is. Um, so it dropped five people, and another click is another five, and you can just keep painting and drawing and dr dragging them. Now this is some sort of bug. Um, I realize it does when you when you drop too many of them, they kind of like do this weird dance. Um, it's not supposed to do that. But in any event, so we can um, take another person and drag them in there, click that, place a whole bunch of other ones. Um, we can select them all. Once they fix this bug, um, we can select them all. Now, I just selected all of this, and it selected my jib and front of house and barricades and yellow jackets and all that other stuff. So I want to kind of like select just the people. So what I could do is right click, filter, um, and then I can click. It doesn't let you, you know, select everything, kind of like filter everything, but it does filter a lot of different things. Um, and this is one of them. So lights, for example, and, you know, people and different unique objects will be able to be selected. So I can click that and then I'm just going to click them. And then what I could do is I can either move them and categorizing them again but what I want to do is I want to go to settings and I want to animate them all so I'm going to put them all in animation number one and then I'm going to click enter and once this bug gets fixed we're going to see that they're all going to be doing whatever animation that specific character does so I'm, I'm going to delete these characters for now because they're just annoying with that uh, fast dance now these 
Um, I'm gonna select all of these manually from here and delete them. Um, the next thing I want to show you is uh, patching. So let's just say we did not patch all our fixtures through the MDR. Um, and when it originally prompted and asked us if we want to patch them, we didn't do that either, and we need to patch all our lights. So there's a couple different ways of selecting lights. One is going down here to selection groups, and each light type would have its own category initially when it's brought in. Um, and if you don't, you can always go select your entire stage, right click, filter, let's grab all the BMFLs and say, okay, we wanna patch these. So we're gonna go into patching. Down here, I'm gonna unpatch everything. There's a few different ways of patching. First way is grab this little finger icon and just drag them, drag that into patch and place it wherever you wanna start patching. So I wanna start patching by universe one, address number one. It's gonna confirm that, that that's the right area I wanna do it in and it's gonna ask me to press OK. Um, the second way to do that, to do it, is have everything selected, go to Tools, Auto Patch Selected, it's gonna ask me where I wanna start it, and then I press OK, and it's gonna patch that as well. Um, and then, if I do this, like this, and I patch all my lights, and I go, okay, if I go to this fixture right here, this guy is going to be in, I don't know, universe bumblefuck, which is 13. And then this light's going to be in, I also don't know where. So I want to select, let's say I want to take all these lights and I want to, you know, give them a certain, certain way of, of certain pattern of, of, patching so what I could do is um, I can select them in the in the way I want to do that which would be take this one and then this one and then this one hitting shift obviously when I'm selecting them or control um, and then I take this and then I can take it take that little finger and then just place it where I want it and when I select it, this is going to be the first one, second one, third one, fourth one, and so on. Okay, so let's say I want to swap um, a specific fixture to a different fixture. So what you do is you select the fixture that you want to change. And in this case, I'm going to select all of my BMFLs. I'm going to go into my library, and I'm going to type in, I'm going to swap them for the clay packy Sharpie. So I'm going to type in Sharpie, um, let's say the Sharpie Plus, I'm going to take the Sharpie Plus and I'm going to, while my fixtures are selected, I'm going to hover, I'm going to take that fixture and hover over the fixtures that I want to swap and then it's going to ask me if I want to do that and say yes and I just swapped all of my fixtures, all my BMFLs to the Sharpie Plus. Now. You do need to repatch these um, because your patch is going to be different. I unpatched them before I did that, but you would need to ch adjust your patch. Don't forget. Um, that is just one option. Now, let's just say another scenario. Say I want to swap, I want to change modes within the fixture before I drag it in. So I just grabbed my fixture, and down here you can change whatever mode the fixture has, but I didn't do that. So I actually see that this fixture only has one mode. So I'm gonna go into, I'm gonna swap all these to the Sharpie, just so we can demonstrate this. Um, now I didn't select the, the, the mode that I wanna select, but I wanna change the mode of these specific fixtures. So what I could do is I could right click them while they're selected I can go into change your mode and I can do mode one or mode two, but you have to figure out what, what mode is what. Um, by selecting it, you change the mode and then obviously uh, repatch them.
Okay, so next thing I'm going to show you is um, Artnet setup. So first thing that we need to do is um, when setting up Artnet would be to go into settings, network settings, and obviously setting your IP address to Artnet. Um, when you do this, you got to close the program and restart it again. And then once you have the program back up, you go to hardware and then you would go to the plus sign right here and you would go to virtual uh, show player you hit OK that's gonna pop this window up and you click Artnet and then you enable Artnet up here these will flash for a second and and then you're in see I have my MA plugged in um, and that's why all of these lights are tickering now but it's not patched to the show file, it's loaded on my MA, and that's why it's a little messed up. So, I'm just going to shut this off, but this is how you set up your Artnet um, to talk to your system. Uh, okay, so there's another software that I use. What this software does is it kind of gives you like a DMX uh, data map showing you that it is getting signal so if I go in my MA and I clear out things I would see that my computer is getting uh, Artnet still is receiving Artnet and both computers are talking um, and if, if D2 is not getting it for some reason I know the issue is within D2 and not within the connection um, so this is just like a small tip for people who don't know of this uh, software now, um, so for the next uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into uh, video walls and mapping. So um, my video panels are video walls from um, Vectorworks. So to map these and put content in them tell D2 that this is not just a regular object it's a video wall so we have to categorize it as a video wall to lay video on that surface um, before we go ahead and do that we're gonna go into settings and we're gonna go into video source and then we're gonna click what kind of video source we want to bring in uh, D2 offers two different type of sources and one is a media player which is loading a file into this uh, um, repository and the other is NDI we're gonna sh I'm gonna show you both but for this specific um, but for this specific thing right now I'm gonna show you um, the NDI file NDI version I'm gonna put the test image just so I have some sort of image because I'm not loading the NDI right now um, so we're gonna go ahead and double click double click this surface we're gonna get this orange pop-up window and then we're gonna get this these two things in the right we're gonna go into material and material we're gonna go into uh, before we, we change that we're gonna go into change video type and then we can go click video wall and that is basically gonna tell the two hey take this material and turn it into a video wall um, and now this surface is a video wall um, then what we're going to do is we're going to go in and take video source and change it into this video source one and that's that NDI file that we just clicked before and when we do that our test image is going to test pattern is going to show up we can click the UV mapping and click one on one and auto map okay so when we hit that and change it into a video wall um, if we zoom in here we can see that these pixels um, light up and we have a whole bunch of different things in this on this in this right panel um, and these are video wall um, parameters so we could change the pixels of the video wall for their size um, we could change the distance and how far how spread apart with the middle millimeters with the pitches of the video wall um, and all the other uh, information that needs to be 
implement it to make your your type of panel so you can get the right um, visual aspect of what you're looking for um, we could change the knit and make this an outdoor wall versus an indoor wall and that's how bright this video wall is going to be so if we make our stage really dark and bring this down to one it dims it out and if we bring it up and that's the brightness of the wall. Um, offset and scale of the map, of the UV mapping of the image. Um, in order to get into video walls, I'm going to open another project. I'm, I'm not another project, but an empty project. Um, so we could build a couple of different things there so I can show you. Um, this is just an empty file. So I can show you different things, different options that can be done with video walls. Um, so I am going to insert an object, a, a plane, in here. Um, we're going to tilt it. Oops. OK. Make it bigger. Okay, so we double clicked. Sorry, first we're going to bring in a source. Let's this time bring in a media source. So we do source one. We're going to do a test image on it. Um, X this. And then we double click this. We're going to. Instead of clicking video wall and going in, changing this into like a pixelated video wall, what we can do is we can just go ahead and put the source straight on it without clicking the, the without turning it into a video wall. And it's just going to keep it as a plane. It's going to keep the whole pixel situation now with the whole lumen situation now. But the problem with this is that when I lower my ambient light, I'm going to go into live. Live kind of takes out all the grids and everything, going from construction mode to like real mode. When I dim out, I don't have any output on my physical um, screen. So the way around that is if you click that and you go into this option right here and you change that into 100%, then when you lower this, the wall is lit. Okay, so this is number one. Um, say we want to, say we had three different walls, and we want to map the content to, this, to these items. The way to do that is you can click UV map once you're selected and then you can change, you can move this thing around on where everything is. Um, but I want my image to map my content throughout the wall. I want these three walls to have one straight image, not three images duplicated. The way to do that is you go into UV mapping. And then while we have these three selected, we can go into columns, we can hit three, and then we can hit map. And what that would do is it's going to divide these three panels, this one video, into three separate panels. For example, if I go one column, three rows, it's going to separate them as three going up. So we're going to go back into one and three and then go map. Now you can adjust this to fix your negative space if you want to. Um, 
I'm gonna show you another way to map, which is a lot better than uh, than this. Uh, when we go back to the ultra file, I just want to show you different techniques over here, and then we're gonna go back to that, and then I'll show you different things. For example, if I had a video wall up here, a panel up here, and then a panel down here, or add a panel that was um, this way, to map this is gonna take me ages. So. There is a better way to do it um, once I show you two other different things. I will um, I will show you how to do the other, the other mapping. Um, okay, the next thing I want to do is um, I want to go up here and I want to take the test image off so we can actually get content in there. We're going to go down here and hit sequence. Um, hit new, I'm going to call it A, um, then I'm going to go into video file, I'm going to right click that, I'm going to go into new, I'm going to go to my desktop where I put my video file that I want to load, I'm going to double click it and bring it into the program, um, and then what I'm going to do is we're going to go into show control up here. In show control, you go into your uh, repository you go into your sequence, you double click that, so we open the sequence up here, then you go back to the repository, you click video file, um, you right click here for video, new video track. We're gonna hit the source that we're pulling from, which is source one, which is that's, that's the source that we made before. I'm gonna click okay. And I'm going to drag this file into this source, kind of like in a video editing software. When I hit play, my file, my video file is going to play on the um, on our map area. Now you can take a couple different files. You can put them here, and as long as you're playing within the file, within the timeline, um, it's going to play on your screens. Now if we go back to construction view, hit live, our content's playing on our screen. Um, I'm just going to keep that pattern. Now what I am going to do is, this is something that was bothering me, because I came from Realizer beforehand, and in Realizer when I used to have um, a video wall sorry one second just trying to make a build some sort of stage and realizer when I had a video wall and the video wall was on that video wall would kind of emit the light that's coming out of the video wall to my surface so since the video wall is a light that light should be reflecting on my surface right but that's not happening here so I spoke to Thomas um, who who kind of is the brains behind this whole uh, operation um, and he he told me a little trick of if I go okay so I was just trying to figure out this issue that I was having with Selvin who was just trying to help me out on Facebook but I guess there is some sort of bug. So I'm going to show you what I wanted to show you anyhow, just in case they uh, eventually they're going to fix it. Um, this only works when you do it with a plane within um, D2. So you have to go to objects, you have to hit plane, you have to use this um, this material to, to, to make this happen. Now, um, not sure why I clicked that. So when I spoke to Thomas a couple of a while ago, I think it's like two, three months ago, he told me that there's something called an area light that can kind of do that. Um, and the way to do that is like this. You have to take this plane and make it a video wall. So change this into video wall. Um, set the pixels on it we're gonna go back and um, set the pattern 
sorry, the uh, video source. So we have that test pattern on it. And then what we're gonna do is, in here, we're gonna add a area light as a child to that plane. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna create that extra light that it just did. So if I lower my light here, you see the light splashing out of it. Now you can go into the settings of the area light and put the nits up, kind of pump them up, and the more you crank them, the brighter the light's gonna be. Um, obviously we don't need to go that strong, but if you're using an outdoor wall or whatever it is, then that might work for you. Um, the problem that I was having now while I was trying to do this is that when I was putting content into it, um, the content was not emitting the light. So when I basically take off the test pattern and then I play the video in the source, there is no light coming out of the video. So that light kind of disappears. So they're hopefully going to fix that. But just so you know when they end up fixing it, that is a really cool feature. Now, um, another thing that I wanted to show was Okay, so question that I've seen on that group was how to make a transparent video wall. Now, D2 does not have the option of doing a transparent video wall, but D2 is a visualization software. And for visual purposes, and only for visual purposes, we can make a see-through video, a see-through video screen to, to look through and I'm going to show you how to do that um, what we're going to do is we're going to go get a person I'm blinking out for a second there we go static I'm going to drop him right there I'm going to put a viper profile over here uh, put on top of his head I am going to get a video projector which is going to be in not in materials but in fixtures video generic projector put the projector up tilt it whoops pull it this way kind of focus it I like taking it as far as possible just so it, you know lower it uh, it's a little it's not as strong you can I think lower the projector's brightness somehow. Don't remember where, but in any event, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it on this screen. Um, I am going to go into Keystone. I'm going to kind of map it ballpark to the screen. And this is where the check happens. You go into materials, you go into fabric, and you go into projection gauze. And you put that gauze on this plane. And what happens is that gauze becomes your video screen. Now, it's not see-through yet, but A, if you take this projector and you pull it back more, then it's going to get lighter. I'm not sure how to lower the intensity or if there is a way to lower the intensity lens projector
in any event, I'm just going to pull it back so it gets lighter. Um, I can go ahead and kind of, where's that keystone? Map it again, kind of keystone it to this thing. Right? And you already see that the that the screen did become kind of transparent. Now, when you have the reason why I put a light in here is because when you turn on a light, then that is when you start seeing the transparency. So obviously if you ma map it properly and you do the whole thing the way you should be, um, this does become as some sort of transparent video wall for visualization purposes. Again, it works. So that's how you uh, create a transparent video screen. Um, okay, so what I want to show you is the more complex way of mapping. And to do that, I'm going to first create a video source. Let's create an MDI video source. Uh, use my capture card. Use a test pattern for now. I'm going to close this, and then I'm going to double click, press shift, double click all my video walls. So now that I have everything selected, all my video wall, all my video walls are selected, except for that one. I am going to give them a video source. And now, well, it's one piece, it's one video kind of map to each slice, right? I'm not going to be sitting there with a the UV mapper and trying to figure out what's what and play with it and because you can't do rows and columns here, not with the sizes of the, the slices that I have going on and now with the round circle and whatnot. So, the trick around this is like this. You go into CAD view, you go into, you click this window right here you go to front view just front view of my stage huh I don't have the middle one selected one second and go back into the view in the CAD and then we're going to go to tool and we're going to go to frontal texture map mapper and then once we have this open we're going to go map to boundaries and what that's going to do is it's going to grab the entire area of what we just selected and kind of map the entire image to that when we go back to 3D view we can see that the image is perfectly mapped in 3D. So, next step is to hit escape and now I'm going to go, we added in our NDI Okay, and now if I go and drop the test pattern from the NDI, <clears throat> I'm going to get my resume input. And something that I forgot to do was to turn on the emitter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load in the show that I 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to load the show that I originally worked on, which is all patched up properly into my MA and everything else. Okay, so this is the file that I was working on originally. And like you see, everything else here is mapped. If I go to Arena and I load my grid, you can see that all my slices are mapped properly. And And if I play with the content, the contents map, map. Okay, so now that our contents mapped, let's make sure that Artnet's working and MA is feeding. Okay, perfect. So, next thing we can do is, I'm gonna go into show control I'm going to go to repository sequences, new sequence, I'm going to call it A, double click it so it opens our timeline, back to repository, audio files, right click, new, I'm going to bring in a track, this is Armin van Buren's Turn It Up official track, we're going to take that, right click here, uh, new audio file, Drag that into the timeline. Make sure it's at the beginning. Press play. Okay, it's working. Now I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna press new DMX stream track. Now, I don't know if this is a bug or this is the way it's supposed to be, but when when I press record, what DMX stream is is basically any DMX data that the that D2 will be getting at that moment, it will record to this line. So, um, in order for me to kind of record a time code track, I need to hear the music. So, to my two cents, is when I press play, the track should be playing as well. But it's not, for some reason. So, I don't know if that's purposely done or not, but I'm going to try doing something else. I'm going to delete what I just recorded. Um, I'm going to play the track off another computer and try to sync them up, sync up my programming with the music coming off the other computer. And hopefully that works. So um, I'm going to press play and record at the same time. Okay, let's stop that and pause the music and let's see what that looks like. Let me stop the map. Okay, so
the way to add in video um, is you go into the repository you have to have a video track you add in a video source so I've added an NDI source and for some reason this doesn't accept the NDI source the video kind of needs to be within the program so um, because I don't work like that I work off Resolume so what I would do is I would VJ the song in Resolume I would record it in Resolume take the file export it import it into here and then put it into the track into the timeline but I'm not going to do that now so I'm just going to show you what what this would look like when you can put it when you put in a track so I would go up here I would make a video source make another video source which is not the NDI it's going to be a regular media player um, with this one is source 2 source 1 is my NDI um, I'm going to come in here right click add video a video track click source 2 and then take this track and place it over here wherever I want this track to be I can always extend it so it loops it I can add in another track I can add in 10 different video clips here and kind of like sync them up if I want to and then when you press play this will all work together as long as your wall is mapped your video wall is mapped to res to to the input of this source and my wall is mapped to Resolume right now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this and I'm going to I've downloaded the um, original Armin van Buren's original video clip video uh, music video of this song which is a lot of text and kind of looks perfect for a video wall so I'm gonna try to sync them together from Resolume and while I'm pressing play here and then see if we can sync the both and kind of get that visual experience that we're looking for um, so I'm gonna make sure that Resolume is still streaming yeah um, and then I am going to load that track okay okay so I'm going to press play and try to sync the both together with that DMX stream that we just did and see what that looks like and these are additional So that works. Next thing we can talk about is rendering an image. This is exporting an image of what your stage looks like. Um, you could set a scene and um, let me turn up some lights. And you can set your different you know parameters here of what you want everything to look like so if you want more haze more cloud less cloud um, and everything else and then you pick the size of the image that you want pixels and everything else and then you can render image save it to pictures I'm gonna call it D2 save and when it's done it's just going to open the picture so this is a high quality picture of your render um, okay so let's add in a DMX camera DMX camera just going to drop it right there
to go to the, to the camera's view, you click camera up here, go in here and DMX camera one, and now we are in our camera's view. Okay, so once you put the camera in, it gets patched automatically, so if you click it, you'll see this is our camera. It's patched at universe 7161. Um, and then if you patch that into your board, camera should move. Okay, so that's how you patch a DMX camera. Okay, so, um, show you the next thing I'm gonna save my project and open in a blank one let's take a person and it loaded with a bug again because for some reason I'm not getting my library so let me see if Okay, I'm gonna have to reload this for one second. Okay, so I'm gonna go to model, people, animate. Just take this one. And we're gonna go into animate. And if I click her and I drag, oops, sorry. We have to make another repository window. Where is that? Sequence. Double click. And then we're going to take her, take that little finger, drop it right there. And then if, if anyone's used a software like Adobe Premiere or Cinema 4D or things like that. It's kind of like the same same trick. Um, okay, so so you press record, move this up. We can move her to there. Press record again, and that will make her move. Now, the cool thing about this is that if we go into her. 3D and make her walk. I think number one makes her walk. No. Nope. There we go. And then we click play and she's walking. So this works for cameras, it works for people, it works for cars, I think any object that's in, I just tried it on people and uh, cameras, but I'm guessing it works for everything. Okay, so let's take a truss, drop it over there. Then we can go to fixtures, machinery, generic motors. Okay, so we have two different type of motors. We have a up and down, and we have a rotating motor. So I'm just going to take the regular motor, put it top of the truss. I'm going to go in here, and then I'm going to expand the motor. And I'm going to take the truss and put it in as a child. And now, when I... Where did my truss go? Oopsie. Truss went all the way down there. I don't know why that does that. It kind of just shoots the truss to a total different position. Um, but if I go to where the truss is and I move this motor up and down, you'll see that the truss will move. 
and works the same same way with the other motor only you get more parameters you expand the entire motor and you just put the truss in on the very bottom one so it's under all the mechanical uh, elements and then you get to function it either through your board if you patch the motor or through the programmer okay so um, let me put in whoops put in about 40 of them we will move them up so once the units are patched, you can kind of use this programmer to operate the lights in a way. Um, so, for example, you can go to tilt, you can go to fan, and this would kind of be like the alignment tool in MA. Um, kind of lets you like fan the units. Um, let's see what else. You can go to effects, load and effects. Um, so minimum and uh, the effect. Why am I on zoom? Sorry. So minimum would be um, kind of take an effect going between point A and point B and then going back to A and then going back to B back and forth so that's what minimum and maximum are um, the effects are going to go between minimum and maximum so you kind of take minimum take maximum put it at a point I want them to go from up here to why isn't this working to down here and what? Okay, right here. And I want to create that this movement, for example. So I move the speed, and now it's kind of going between the two. Two, two positions that I kind of created and that's what this effect generator does um, I don't really I haven't really messed around with this too much because I, I always use my board um, but just there in case you need it this allows you to like you know move them according to this kind of XY position type of thing uh, and that's about it. Alright, this kind of concludes the tutorial. Um, if you have any other questions, um, you can hit me up on Facebook and Instagram. If I know the answer and I can help you, then by all means. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good day.